like that. <laughs> Woo! What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up Show. My name is BJ Matthews, aka B. Just before we get started, follow us on our YouTube page, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hit that like button before y'all enter this house. You know what I'm saying? Comment. You know what I'm saying? Tell me that you guys are here. You know what I'm saying? Get the notifications out there. We lo- enjoy put out this fire content for all of the subscribers and also newcomers as well. You know what I mean? We want to spread the good word um, with basketball going into the next season. Uh, the Warriors just uh, finished off winning the, uh, their fourth title in eighth season so that's a great thing um but let's get going so y'all know that the nba free agency is about to begin and kick off with uh as well as the nba summer league and the draft as well so this is the time where teams are looking to build their you know rosters and you know players looking to you know get a bigger payday or look for another opportunity for a new team um this is the time you know i'm saying these next three months are going to be crazy Right. June, July to August, they're going to be very, very crazy months for the NBA. I think this is going to be one of the most bizarre free agencies we've had in some time. You know what I'm saying? You got some guys in the in that are really, you know, looking to be moved. You got, you know, Bradley Bill with Washington. You got Damian Lillard in Portland. Um, you got um, Donovan Mitchell. You got Zach Levine. Right. That's just the, you know, some of the main names. But there's another main name that, um, was actually put out there um, this week as much as yesterday. I kind of waited to, you know, talk about it because I want to get all the mainstream media for them to let they do their thing and talk about it first. Then I'll do my piece. But uh, Kyrie Irving <coughs> right now was reported uh, by Shams Krisma. No, people don't know who Shams Krisma is. He's one of the senior NBA writers. Actually, he's up there with Adrian Wojnarowski, Chris Haynes, uh, Ramona Shelburne, you know what I'm saying? So anything that he reports is pretty solid, right? Um, the Nets and the Brooklyn Nets and the Kyrie Irving uh, experiment seems to be coming close to an end. Um, they're both at a standstill with Kyrie Irving's contract. Um, Kyrie Irving wanted the max dollars, the max deal uh, to stay with the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, the Nets right now do not feel that Kyrie Irving is worth giving that amount of you know commitment to because he hasn't committed to the Brooklyn Nets entirely. Now, whether you want to say that's his fault or not, I'm just saying what the situation is. Um, I think his he wants the five year deal, max money, max dollars. Um, that's where you know any player wants the best deal they can get, right? Um, and I think the the Brooklyn Nets are looking at it like you know you know we we don't even know if you really commit to playing basketball. You know those who understand what happened last season with Kyrie. Um, coming off that injury after the Bucks series um, in 2021, he was very, very like, you know, into the social justice, the vaccine situation. He was turned off by, um, he, he chose not to, you know, partake in, you know, getting the vaccine, uh, which led to, you know, the state of New York actually lifting the mandate for athletes and entertainers. So it allowed Kyrie to play again. But it was a lot of things that they had to accommodate for Kyrie Irving. I'm talking about the Brooklyn Nets you know, making him a part-time player, um, allowing him to, you know, play role games, allowing him to, you know, come as he, you know, come and goes as he wants. Um, that's kind of, you know, stuff that we ain't never seen before as far as, you know, any NBA player in NBA history. Those accommodations were made for Kyrie Irving. So right now I think the Brooklyn Nets are looking at it like, look, it's just not worth the time, worth the trouble. We're going to do what's best for the organization. And if that means I give you the max deal right now, then that's, then so be it. So, there's been three teams that's been kind of like somewhat um, talk about getting Kyrie Irving services, right? There's three particular teams that are actually in the race right now to get Kyrie Irving, uh, who he, fr- he plans to test the free market uh, agency um, this summer, right? So one of the teams um, is right off the bridge is the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks is one of the teams that Kyrie Irving – um, that there seems to be having a very interest for Kyrie. Now, you all know the New York Knicks are right off the bridge from, you know, Barclays in New Jersey. Um, Kyrie Irving grew up in New Jersey. I think he grew up near um, West Orange. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying it right. West Orange, New Jersey. Uh, that's where, you know, he spent a lot of his high school career. He went to St. Patrick's uh, School in, in New Jersey. Um He's been a lot of time in that area. So if he went to New York Knicks, he would just be up the bridge, probably not more than like 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. So he would still be close to, you know, his familiar surroundings, really wouldn't have to change any scenery, 
um, he'll just be up the road. Now, the Knicks are a team, in my opinion, who are very young. Um, there's not really no championship aspirations for them. They had, they did not make the playoffs this season. They made it last year as the fourth seed. They got knocked out by the fifth seed, Trey Young, Atlanta Hawks. Um, they led by Julius Randle and uh, R.J. Barrett. But Kyrie Irving to the Knicks, really, you're not really talking about getting a championship. Okay, you still you have to look at like they still be behind Milwaukee. They probably still behind Miami. They'll be behind um, Philadelphia um, and Boston. He'll be they'll be behind by all three or four of those teams. Okay, even you add Kyrie Irving to that roster. So now you have to ask yourself: Is Kyrie Irving just getting there just for the money? Because I think the Knicks will probably offer him the most money, or are they just looking at like okay, Kyrie Irving feel like he can compete? You have to ask what's the, what's the what's your goals because they already got Derrick Rose there as their point guard, as a, as a veteran point guard. So what would you really need Kyrie Irving there except for, you know, uh, financially, you know, box office, uh, bring excitement to the team, to the garden, or Kyrie Irving just looking to get the biggest payday? That's what, that's what I can only see because you're not going to New York to win no championship. And, you know, there's been speculation that Kyrie Irving doesn't really care about basketball anymore. Now, I'm not going to say that. I think Kyrie Irving does love basketball. I just think he's a point in his life where basketball is not the only thing. And that's how it should be. Like, you still should be able to, you know, understand that, yes, this is your job, but it's not who you are. You should be able to separate your job from, you know, your personal life and, you know, other endeavors. And if you're able to find other commitments and other things that you feel like you've grown, made you grow up, then that's great. I think the only problem is with Kyrie is when he tries to, you know, you can't you can't take off work for personal reasons. Like once you're at your job, like you have to give your time to your job. And I think that's the only thing Kyrie Irving's, you know, miss misstepping that. You know, you can't take out, you know, a lot of us would love to, you know, quit our jobs. You know, a lot of us, even with me with podcasting, you know, doing this, like there's days I don't even want to feel like even making videos, but I do it anyway because I have to be consistent until I get on the big big stage you know what i'm saying and i can afford to you know be a little bit more um versatile and be a little bit more you know what i'm saying um flexible right but you know i think Kyron, the only thing with him is just he's he can't continue to take time off just for his personal gain and his personal use that's the only thing but other than that man i have no problem with Kyrie Irving. all right let's go to the next team though now this one is actually funny to me but uh we're going to talk about it anyway and that's the la clippers with Kawhi Leonard and uh, Paul George. Now, look, y'all know the Clippers are my team. Um, the Clippers are my team. That's I feel like they're going to win the whole thing next season. I think they are going to dethrone the Golden State Warriors for numerous of reasons that we will talk about in another video I'll probably put out tomorrow, uh, that the Clippers will take out the Warriors next year in the playoffs when they meet. But that's beside the point. Um, if you look at... The Clippers, first off, from top to bottom, they have the most depth, in my opinion, of anybody in the NBA. Jerry West being uh, the general manager of that team, or I don't even want to say general manager, that's Lauren Frank. I don't know what exactly his position is, but he's part of the front office. Everywhere Jerry West has gone, he's built a championship team. If you look at the Lakers, you know, with uh, Kobe and Shaq, you look at uh, the Golden State Warriors, even now, he helped build that team. You look at the Memphis Grizzlies with Zach Randolph, Marcus Saul, Mike Conley. He built that team into a competitive playoff team. Now you look at the Clippers right now. They are in talks right now to be one of the top two teams in the Western Conference. Now all they got to do is just to stay healthy. That's the only thing that the Clippers need to do is stay healthy and have everybody ready to go. They got multiple six foot five, six foot eight wings from, you know what I'm saying, Robert Covington, Nicholas Batum, Norman Powell, Terrence Mann. Uh, of course, you got Kawhi and Paul George who are two of the most elite wing defenders in the league. And they got play of outside shooting with, you know, Luke Kennard, Marcus Morris, um, you know, and even the young guys like Brandon Boston. You know what I'm saying? They got a lot of, you know, depth on that team. The only thing that the Clippers are looking up to, they need to probably finally probably do is just kind of like maybe if they can get a more better center, but even that's even a, uh, just an option. You know, they don't have to do that. They're pretty stacked. But going back to the Kyrie Irving situation, 
I don't think it makes sense to sign Kyrie Irving to the Clippers. It don't make sense to me. Because you're asking for, let's just say that if they keep Kawhi and PG, they're pretty much having to give up all their depth to get them, to get Kyrie Irving. And y'all, are you really trying to let go of guys like Norman Powell, maybe Robert Covington, maybe even Reggie Jackson, who I forgot to to, uh, to mention Reggie Jackson? Are you really what, willing to let that risk go? Just to bring in a guy who you don't know mentally where he'll be at. I'm not trying to, you know, cast a Kyrie. I'm not saying that he ain't going to be. I'm saying, like, it's just a lot of question marks. And the Clippers already have chemistry already built. They were just out here this past weekend in San Diego um, working out as a team at the San Diego State University. You know what I'm saying? If you look at their whole team, they seem like they're a team that gets together in the locker room. They seem very close-knit group from last year. And they're they're salivating for the opportunity to get back to, to the court next season. Because if you ask me, I feel like the Clippers have lost, left two championships over on the table with Kawhi being out. So you think they're not going to allow anything to mess this up. And Jerry West ain't going to allow anything to mess this up. Those guys are workaholics and they do what's best for the Clippers. So I just think, you know, having to give up all the depth on the Clippers and, you know, Kyrie's Irving's mental stake in his life right now. Um mixed in with um the, even their offense. They don't they don't need another, you know, a guard, you know, a dynamic score. They need a point guard, a guy more facilitated like a Malcolm Brogdon or Jalen Brunson. Um, somebody that, you know, can fit within the team. You're gonna have to spread, you know, multiple points around if you have Kyrie, James or Kyrie, Kawhi and PG. Everybody gonna have to get their shots and they don't need a guy like Kyrie Irving there. So I, I I think the Clippers should pass and you know just look for other opportunities at the point guard position, and then finally the last one, uh, this is a familiar one, the L.A. Lakers. Okay, the story franchise, the team that's won seventeen chips, right? We gotta talk about them. They have also been discussions for getting Kyrie Irving and having a reunion with LeBron James. Now. The Lakers are, to me, in a desperate situation right now. Anything would be better than what they have right now. They just got their new coach, Darvin Ham, which I think was a good move. They got Rasheed Wallace, to me, who um, is going to somewhat toughen up Anthony Davis. Um, so they're in a good spot right now as far as they're, they're going towards the right direction. But their team is still has a lot of holes. They don't have defense. Um, they don't have that much defense. They don't have much outside shooting. Um, Anthony Davis is, you know, seems to be very injury prone. We'll see what happens with him this off season. And LeBron James is getting up there in age. So they're looking for any type of life or any type of support, anything to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? So this is something that has been in talks. This, but this has been in talk for the last couple of years where they tried to, you know, um, connect LeBron and Kyrie back, Ir- Irving back together. But I'm just interested to see how they're going to do it. Are you going to find a way to give up Russ to get Kyrie? You think the Brooklyn Nets are going to want to take that? I don't think they are. Cause if, and even if they do, let's say that hypothetically they did give up uh, Russell Westbrook. The Nets will have to give up another player to get Russell Westbrook because the contract that Russell Westbrook has is, is insane. He has, he's making more money on the Lakers than LeBron and Anthony Davis. I think at 43 million, I think Kyrie is making like 35 million. So they got to get another player, maybe like a Bruce Brown or something like that, to send to get a Westbrook. And I don't think the Nets are really salivating to get a guy like Westbrook, you know, straight up. But I got to look at the other side of this, too. And shout out to Chris Broussard for saying this. If you're just talking about basketball, uh, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook have more success than Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Because you got to remember, when those years in OKC, those OKC years, man, the the uh, the Thunder were, you know, top two seeds in the uh, Western Conference. They took a San Antonio Spurs team. They beat them twice um, in the playoffs with Kawhi Leonard and LaMarcus Aldridge. Once in 2016, then once in uh, 2012 when the, uh, the, the Thunder went to the uh, finals. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like they haven't had much success. Um at this at the situation, 
So right now, if I look at what's going on, that they will they will somewhat find a way to um uh you know coexist with each other. And I think from here on out, if I look at what's going on with um excuse me, I just had somebody come past my car, so I was kind of stopping, but now I'm good. Um the Nets at this point. And the Lakers, if you choose to bring in that, that swap in for Westbrook for Kyrie, it, it's kind of you can see like Kyrie with LeBron, they had success in Westbrook and and KD, they had success. So maybe they could do it with your problem, my problem, kind of like with Ben Simmons and James Harden. You know what I'm saying? So it's not out the question, but I just think the Lakers are just they ran out of options. I think they just got to kind of somewhat find a way to get other assets because I just don't think they're going to be able to get Kyrie Irving. It's a very slim chance. So what I think is going to happen with Kyrie Irving is he's going to pro- he's going to pretty much stay with the Brooklyn Nets at least the beginning of the season. Um, they're going to see what happens with him. Um, they're not completely off on Kyrie Irving. I just think what they want to know is Kyrie Irving going to be committed to the team. And if not, then they're not going to give him this max contract. So I think they'll at least give him training camp and give him, you know, the first half of the season to at least, to at least show himself. It's just going to be a matter of Kyrie Irving is willing to accept um, some of the offer. And I think Kyrie Irving, his relationship with KD is going to play a factor in it as well because, you know, you guys got to remember Kevin Durant stood up for Kyrie Irving when he was going through this little vaccine situation. So you, if that's really your best friend, like you say you are, Kyrie, then you would stand by him he, knowing that he needs you, knowing that you brought help bring him there, you know, to at least, you know, sign that contract and then possibly get a re-up um, a year or two later. I mean, that's just, that's just friendship. You know what I'm saying? Katie put his neck on, he put his neck on the line for you. You know, you should show him that same amount of loyalty, but we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? And, um, appreciate you guys coming, tuning in, uh, continue like, share, subscribe, pull up basketball podcast, pull up, see, pull up a chair, pull up. Peace. I like swimwear.